German drilling, three barrels, 1616, unknown rifle caliber. It doesn't work. But this thing is the definition of a blivet. It's nine pounds of crap in a two pound box. Let's dive down a rabbit hole, climb up inside this little thing and find out why it doesn't work, what caliber it's in and let's just generally go have a good time. Follow me. This is the left hand trigger. And when the left hand hammer comes down, it comes all the way down like this. And if you turn that trigger loose, here we go. When the hammer comes back, it locks out. Okay, so this is the lock, meaning that if you dropped the gun, it's more difficult for this to set the barrel off. The right barrel does the same deal. That comes down, hits, rebounds, firing pin sticks out, and then when you turn it loose, it locks. So these go in. Now, this lever here is supposed to select the, uh, the rifle barrel, and it's on this trigger. Now this trigger has a set trigger, we'll look at it, but this comes forward till it clicks, and then you just touch it here. We'll get something really light. We'll just touch it, like here, right? You see that? That's supposed to set that firing pin out, and it doesn't. So I don't know, and it locks this hammer up. See, it doesn't do anything here. Come back over, and, and you get that. Where do you even begin? There's not a tremendous amount of wood. This thing makes an L.C. Smith look like a bank vault. There isn't very much wood here. So we're going to take all of this apart, put a little drop of croil on it, and next time you see, we'll be flipped over the other way, and the gun will be going to be pointing that way. We've got the two locks taken off of this. It was one screw coming through that way, popped out, didn't fight us. All of these screw heads are engraved, so you got to be really careful because, you know, my normal just pound them down flat, and you, you really can't do that. You must have screwdriver tips that absolutely fit. Okay, the two locks are identical except for one thing. There's a surface right here, and that surface, there's a bar here, and when we select rifle, that pops out and locks this lock in position right here. That slides up in here and locks this and prevents it from moving. Um, other than that, we've got, we've got the locks out, and I'm going to tell you what, you still can't see the rifle in it. I mean, it's it's... And look at this inletting. I mean, this inletting is stunning. The inletting is stunning on this thing. This right, this thing is in great shape. And what I'm hoping is we get down inside this and it's just a whole bunch of old grease frozen up. One can hope. So I ground this screwdriver to exactly match. We've covered that before. Let me keep my finger on the way. Now this is not a wood screw. This comes through the bottom of this trigger guard and is actually up into the tang. So I'll probably be able to get this most of the way out and then I'll have to take a punch and run it through. Okay, yeah, that's this. Hand me a, yeah, right there, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want right there. Okay, we get up inside this hole and run this out. Okay. I don't have a tremendous amount of tension on this because I'm trying not to crush anything. All right. Now, I haven't been inside this drilling, and I don't go into a lot of drillings. I don't see them very much. But um, for those of you that are curious, it's not really a drilling. It's a dryling, like Eins by Dry. And this has three. And then, um, you know, like a, a, a two-barrel gun is a Zweiling, and then a four is a Zwierling. I'm not German. I'm not pronouncing it right. I don't claim to know how to do it. I'm just telling you what I think it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Angel piss for the win, right? Yeah. All right. So I did um, hose all these down a couple of days ago to make this a little bit simpler. We've got one more screw to get up here on the top. So we'll pop this out of the way. 
and that'll let me get on that screw head right there and okay now I'm gonna hold my finger up underneath this because I don't know what's gonna come falling off of this right here so I'm just tapping the top of this screwdriver and I'm using that to push the bottom of this out you can start to see this move I don't want to go too far so I'm trying to not drop it on the floor but what I've done now is popped it out this gun is so tight, the inletting is so precise that the slightest amount of wood um, expansion kind of gets in the way. So we'll just shake this. Okay, that came out. And there's a piece that hit the deck, and it's a spring. So we'll have to remember that this spring hit the deck. It came out. That is a honking spring right there. That is a lot of spring. Yikes. All right, now I want to flip it over. I'm just going to flip it over so that I can come up underneath this and I can tap this screw out ever so slightly. So that screws in there at an angle like this. Okay. That screws out the bottom. And there we go. There's the lock. And I'm still not entirely positive how this works. This is what's holding the gun shut right here. Let me get back down in the middle here. That's what's holding the gun shut. And that's the spring that fell out. That spring is what's holding that shut. And then when we turn the, um, turn the side lever, that will pull this backwards and allow that to come open and undo the, undo the lock. And I still don't see how that bottom firing pin, that's all hidden up inside this block of metal. So I'm going to stop here for a second and contemplate what's next. All right, so I'm going to try to get the light on this. There is a, the end of the firing pin is right there in that tunnel. And it's going down like this. So it looks like when this is out, it cannot move the firing pin, but when this is in, it puts the end of this bar in the way and the hammer hits here and shoves that. Now that may be battered up, that may be screwed up. I don't know. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, let me just get my hand out of the way. I'm just gonna take this spring out. Not a very common, low parts count compared to the last one of these we did. We did one for, um, Eric over at IV88, and that was a complex little bugger. That had th three hammers, three sears, busier than a three peckered billy goat. So let's lift this spring loose. So we got the spring loose, and then that's that's free to move. So then we're gonna see. I can pop the bottom of this hammer off once again. Now I did croil all this, but not down in this. Oh, look at that! It's not gonna fight us. We got lucky and okay we got lucky okay so there's a square hole here there's a square hole here and just like on other locks avoid the temptation to stick a punch inside here because like on a lock let's just say this is the hammer on the outside of a of a, uh, of a muzzle loader locker in 1873 if you drive this in, you might blow a scab off the top. So what we got to do is I'm going to go find a, a brass punch. That's the inscribed circle inside this. Wait for a moment. I'm just going to get on this here. See, we're not down inside the hole. Okay. That part came off. And then, wow, oh, that's stiff. Wow. Okay, we're going to tap this out anyway. While we got this thing apart, we're going to clean it. So that comes out, and then that leaves 
this will come out. Now, on the other side of this, I took a screw off off camera, and I'm going to flip this over and show you what I took out. There is a retention screw right here in this hole, and I popped that retention screw out, and that appears to be holding this in, and this is bound. So this part right here, that piece right there, that round piece, I think is the firing pin. So I gotta, I'm gotta. i just going to tap down on that a little bit. Hang on a minute. Let me get it in the vise. I don't know how well this is going to show. I'm not hitting anything very hard. I'm just sort of... No. Well, that's in there hard. That's not going anywhere. So when I'm tapping on it, the punch is bouncing off of this piece. It's, it's just bouncing off of it, which tells me that it's, it's hard down in here. So let's see if all that tapping, ah, we've made some headway. See, there's a little bit there. There's a possibility that that firing pin is broken right there. So I'll dig down a little bit deeper. Be right back. So I came in and I tapped this firing pin out backwards, and I'm going to tell you what. Let's check out, look at the angle that that firing pin takes. Okay, so when I was down inside here, I noticed that there's a lot of this dried on, almost looks like varnish stuff. So this is the upside down of the lock. It's in here like this, and I mean the lock for what, the, this is what holds the barrel shut. And it's a lot of this, it's almost like dried on gasoline. I went and got a piece of blue towel here, and you see how the end of this spring is open right here? It wasn't closed up, it was just clipped. I think this is a replacement spring, and this open end was up against the butt of this, and it wedged the firing pin, is what I think happened, because I gave it one tap, and out she came. So what I'm thinking here, again, I'll leave the blue towel up here, this makes a little more sense. I think when you, this is the angle the firing pin is sitting at, it's coming down like this, and when you slide this out, the hammer can hit this and rotate this down like this, and I think that's how it works, and when you rotate it out, down it goes, and that little screw that was locking this piece in um, went down inside this hole right here, and there we go that lock and hole right there so i think that's how all that works and i i don't think this is broken now i'm going to retract that statement i don't think it's broken i just think that it is dirty we'll clean it and we might have got away with one and this has got to be the simplest drilling i've ever been in in my life all right well that's where we're at we're going to give this thing a good scrubby dubby and when we come back we'll put her back together again and see if we can demonstrate this i also think we had a bit of a manual of arms issue here. <clears throat> this hammer probably has to be cocked before you engage the, uh, the, the rifle pin. I don't know. We'll take a look at that when we get there. But we're going to strip all this down and clean it. pretty confident that we're on the problem. So we're gonna go ahead and do a chamber casting. We'll heat up some Cerosafe here, which is basically bismuth. It's gonna allow us to take a casting in the chamber. Once we've done that, then we'll know what kind of ammo we gotta build. Because I don't think you can get down to Wally World and buy ammo for a 9.2 by, 9.3 by 72R.
Cerosafe has a fairly high surface tension, so I'm just going to leave the extractor in. I do have the extractor retention screw out, so I can just put a punch on the bottom of this thing and pop it up. I'm going to warm the tubes up just a little bit. Um, just so it's not quite as wrinkled. I'm trying to get a little better casting. This round, God, this round comes down to about here. I got this warm enough that this didn't set immediately, which is what I wanted. I know I made a mess here. It is what it is. We'll clean it up. This stuff only melts at 180 degrees, and it's not even like solder. It doesn't stick. It sticks to practically nothing. In about a half an hour, this stuff will finish contracting as it cools down. It will expand again and give me a pretty good idea what this chamber looks like. So when this whole thing gets hard, We'll stick a rod down the muzzle and just tap this out. We have detected an anomaly. While I'm pretty certain that this barrel has actually got a 9.3 by 72 rimmed uh, chamber in it, that casing just doesn't go down there. And, and if I beat on that with a hammer, it'll barely go down flat. Ask me how I know. Anyway, we lift this back up. This has been sized already in a sizing die. And what I'm looking at is there's, you can actually see some of the streaks around it, right? Uh, let me see if I can get the light to show. Right there. See those streaks right underneath my thumbnail going by? Right there. That's where it's dragging on the inside of the chamber. And it's odd because it's been through a sizing die, but even the unsized stuff, We've got another drilling barrel here and drops right in, see? So the dies uh, agree with it. Another barrel agrees with it. So the odd man out is our particular gun. So I'm going to have to get a chamber reamer stuffed down inside this thing. Um, and we're going to, we got to have a chamber reamer made. And we're going to open this chamber up a little bit so that it fits the brass you get, the dies you can have, it fits the ring, or not the reamer, but it fits everything else that's available instead of having a one of a kind set of dies made for this, which is, and it's not much, it's a tenth of a millimeter right here. So, what we did to get around this, since I'm not going to be able to get a full length round in there. I cut the back end off one of these because I tried to resize it. I messed it up a little bit, but I cut the back end off a 9.3 by 72. You can see right there. And we got this loaded full of red dot. Now, why do we have this? That will fit. It's going to go in. It'll shut. Everything's going to be fine. And when I get the gun closed, we can find out whether or not the firing pin works, which is the whole reason why we're here in the first place. You would say, why did I put gunpowder in here when just a primer would work? Yeah, this is cooler, yes. So we put the gun back together again. We haven't conserved it yet. This is a gunsmithing step you gotta do. You gotta figure out what's broken. I'll solve the chamber problem. I made a squib just to see whether or not the firing pin's gonna touch it or not. We'll stick that bad boy down in there. Shut it, select rifle cock the right hammer, set the set trigger, and when I tap it, it ought to go off. And it did, you see. So now we know that that firing pin works. Um, I would have thought, I'm leaving this shut because I didn't hear what I thought I was going to hear. So we're just going to sit here for a second, take it out of rifle. It went off, so I'm not really sweating it. Picks up. Oh yeah, we got tons 
a firing pin protrusion. We'll show you this when we get back in the building. So that brings us to the 16 gauge barrels. The way I've heard it told, typically you run 16s with the rifle barrel underneath because the rifle barrel nestles very neatly. A lot of people are wondering why the 16 gauge is even relevant and is still made. And I would have to tell you that for a variety of medium frame shotgun reasons, um, the 16 can do things the 12 really can't slow down and do, and it can do things the 20 can really not speed up and do. All right, here we go. Yeah! Okay, I'm looking now for loose metal. This is a hell of a gun. All right, let's get back inside and do a little bit of a post-mortem, and I'll tell you what the thought process was. And back inside now, and we're looking at primer indent, and I'm going to tell you, these locks are taking care of business, man. They are creaming these primers. Even the rifle round got, got creamed. So let me explain to you what happened here, and I tried to before. This shell, I tried to re, I tried to resize it with a slightly different resizing die, and I, I I hosed it up, so I cut it off below the area of the chamber that's too tight. And we were able to make a forming round with it, prove that it went, and boy, did it ever, did it ever knock that knock that primer well. So what we've done here is we've taken the gun apart, cleared the alibi, which is lower firing pin didn't work, nothing else happened. And now that we're all done with this, now we can go in and conserve it if we wanted to, punch it up. This gun is in stunning shape for its age. Let me grab this. Let me roll this up here. There we go. This thing's in stunning shape for its age. And I'm not sure we're going to do a whole lot of messing with it. So all we really did was some maintenance. And then what I'm absolutely certain that that chamber has to get opened up because it is chamber casting and I'm pretty sure we're going to have to open it up. Then it'll take regular 9.3 by 72 ammo and it'll function like the rest of these did. Uh, nice old girl here. I just kind of want to let you guys and some of you beginning gunsmiths in on the thought process of how do you attack this. The sexy stuff is the finish. The, the nasty stuff is going in and finding the spring that it held up a firing pin. You just got to go in and find that and come back out again. I'll fix the ammo problem, and we'll talk about that later in a different area where I'm allowed to talk about it. Um, but for right now, as always, it's been a pleasure.